Hi, I'm going to be doing some penguin-y stuff today, and you know what an absolute guru I am with penguin computer stuff. Um, I'm going to be repurposing this uh, B-Link, which is seen in the mailbag, the EQI-12. I do have a uh, lower power one, it's like an N150 uh, processor one, but I can't find it, it's here somewhere. So anyway, I'll use this, I think this is an Intel i5 uh, jobby, pretty powerful little beast. Don't need this much power, but what I'm going to do today is I'm going to install RPF Sense on this, which is a firewall, and I'm also going to use it as a VPN as well. So um, I probably won't show you all the details of setting this up, but I thought I'd give it a go. So I have been assured that PF Sense is the duck's guts, and it's going to uh, provide me with more, better security and also uh, VPN uh, capability as well for my entire lab. So um, yeah, I've downloaded PF Sense onto a stick here. Uh, using Ballina Etcher because I'm such a PC guru, I know how to do this. And this is what I've currently uh, got at the moment. I've got uh, my fiber to the premises, fiber comes uh, straight in. I've got my NBN uh, modem thing here, which has four ports on it, but I'm only using one. And that goes into my uh, Wi Fi routery uh, thing that is very ancient. Um, so, yeah, sec security vulnerabilities there. Um, and then that goes into a dumpster um, TP Link uh, switch here, 16 channel switch, which then goes out to all the ports including my uh, NAS as well and I edit all my videos from my NAS actually. People think oh, oh you need a solid state drive, really fast solid state drive on your machine you're editing on. No, I edit all my videos including 4K directly from the spin-in NAS. Now that's solid state rubbish, spin-in NAS here. Um, then I've got various PCs including my editing PC and my lab PC and my shipping PC and other stuff. Um, and then I've got things connected up to the uh, Wi-Fi and I'm only using one output uh, from the Wi-Fi router here. And then I've got that going 100 meters down into the basement into my dungeon. Um, I've got another uh, switch down there. I've also got another Wi-Fi access uh, point down there and I've got various uh, uh, things. I've got a backup PC down there and other things connected up down in my dungeon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, this new PF Sense box between the uh, modem here and uh, then and and the switch. So my Wi-Fi router I'm going to move um, over to one of the ports on the uh, switch that has been recommended because uh, I don't want that in the way. I just want that to be like an access point uh, thing. And then the PF Sense box. Uh, that'll handle the uh, DHCP stuff. And I've been assured that this is the duck's guts from a security point of view. So let's power this thing up and uh, see. I've, already, I've got Windows 11 on here, but uh, we're going to install uh, a penguin on here using, uh, I think PFSense uses uh, the penguin, doesn't it? And we're going to uh, install that. So I'll get back to you. So going to the BIOS, going to change my boot order uh, priority here. So option number one. Let's boot from my USB device. It's found it. SanDisk, partition one. All right, no worries. And after that, we'll just do number two as the Windows boot manager there. So let's give that a bell. Save and exit. Reboot in. Ah, oh, oh, boom. Straight in. <laughs> there you go. Geez, that was quick, wasn't it? Damn. Um, yeah, okay, I've never done this before, but I'm an absolute guru at PC stuff, as everyone knows. So I totally know what I'm doing. Uh, and copyright trademark notices, uh, yeah, okay, uh, firm, firmware error, ACPI could not resolve symbol blah blah, found blah blah, firmware error blah blah. Whoa, so I pressed enter, install pfSense, I got past that, rescue shell, no, install pfSense. What are the advanced options? Um, yeah, it keeps telling me that, so that could be a, a boot thing, bias thing. Continue installation, save options, uh, yeah, back, okay. So install <laughs> PF Sense. Um, yeah, that's just annoying because it just overlays that error there. But anyway, set up the network to continue, setting up the network to continue the installation. At the moment, I've just got it connected uh, to one of the ports on my uh, uh, switch here. So I don't know if that's correct or whether or not I need to plug it directly into, well, or whether or not I need to plug it directly into the modem. Maybe I should plug it directly into the modem, I'm thinking. Hmm. So I haven't shown it here, but uh, this new uh, PC, I've connected directly to the modem over there just in case uh, it needs that. So can I bloody get rid of this? Just choose OK, continue, proceed with the installation, DHCP. 
No, I want the DHCP to be going on in here, but I assume I can change this all later. Oh. oh, hang on. No. Oh, oh, I'm down. I'm down here in the prompt. Uh, mouse doesn't work. Okay, oh, an installation step has been aborted. Would you like to restart the installation? Yes, restart. <laughs> but, oh, I'm down on the prompt now. Oh, this is ridiculous. Uh, I'll get back to you. Well, I just rebooted and started again, and I have to select the WAN interface, which is the wide area network which connects to the modem, but I've got two Ethernet ports on this thing, which is what you need, um, but I don't know which one's actually what. So both of them just say no carrier. Ugh. All right, so it said something about ACPI. Auto configuration is disabled. Enable hibernation. It enables or disables the ability to hibernate. Uh, no, I don't. I want to disable hibernation, I suspect. Sleep state. Suspend to RAM. Suspend disabled. Don't want any of that because I want this thing to run all the time. And I guess auto configuration enabled? Oh, okay. It was just suspend. Auto configuration enabled. I'll try that. Well, that didn't fix it. <sighs> I'll set it to manual and that disable thing. Well, that's a nope. Exact same error. So it doesn't, I mean, that's what it says. Firmware error, ACPI. So I have no idea what that is. Uh, something dot get. I don't know. Um, yep. Yep. No idea. But it's just turned up the same error. So I guess my doodad box isn't um, like out of the box compatible with uh, the free BSD that uh, this thing runs on. So, okay, I speed ran the uh, thing before it, well, popped up with an error message, cannot reach the NetGate servers. Uh, yeah, okay, wonderful. I changed the ethernet socket on the front and it looks like I'm getting active now. So I can choose that, RE1. So, proceed with the installation, I guess. And now, it should find the server because there is Oh, uh, none. Do not assign the LAN interface. Right, no, because we were RE1. RE1 had the connection, so do not assign the LAN interface. LAN RE1 active. Uh, please confirm the interface assignment to continue. Well, that's got active, right? So we want that. And let's see if we can contact the servers now. Bloody cloud rubbish. Oh, yeah, this does not have a, yes, plus subscription. I don't want that. Um, install CE. Yes, so I want the, uh, yes, I think CE's community edition or something, I think. So, yes, I want install CE. I don't want the plus. So I don't want to purchase anything. I want the freebie. Proceed with the installation. Continue. File systems are recommended default. Uh, GPT partition scheme. Okay, proceed with the installation. Aha. Uh -huh. Stripe, stripe, no redundancy, uh, yeah, whatever. Let's select the disk. Yep, that's the one. I want to override my Windows. Last chance. Are you sure you want to destroy the current Windows 11? Yes, I wish to destroy it. Committing the changes. All right. So, yeah, this message is just annoying. It's not stopping me do anything. Current stable version. Uh, yes, yes, current stable version. Oh, hang on. Whoa. Yes, current stable version. Yes. Oh, finally. Here we go. We're in like Flynn, I think. 17 meg. Is that all? What? Hang on. This process will require 64 meg more space. Ah, uh, why? I thought it was going to nuke the solid state drive. There's nothing there. I can't see under it. It's the bloody error messages, if there's anything under that. I just have to wait. I guess, um, should have, to, yeah, update him, yep, yeah, okay, no, it's going, I don't know why it said it re will require more space, process will require 100, oh, okay, it looks like it's, yep, right, everything it needs to download, it just tells you, it. it's an incremental thing, it tells you it needs, okay, it needs another 121 meg, it's got that because it's nuking the drive, which is a uh, one gig drive or something, so, yeah, all right, I'll get back to you, looks like it's working. Whoa, I think we're done. PFSense post installation setup, done. It looks like there's a button there, I guess. I just hit that. Installation complete. Would you like to reboot the install system now? Reboot. Woohoo! Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. Um, yep, yep, it's rebooting. So, yeah, this has been a little bit frustrating, but ultimately, 
got through it. Okay, well, it just booted. There was multi-user, I don't know, single user, multi-user. Got no idea. What? Launch shell, select a configuration, install. I just installed the bloody thing. Oh, I'm a dumbass. It was still booting from the USB stick. <laughs> so, all right, there you go. <laughs> That's a pebcack. Yep, yep. That's a Dave brain fart there. Well, there, there you go. So we're booting from the disk now. I still did not see that boot screen, whether or not it was single user, multi user, whatever the options are. Starting device manager. Okay, we're good to go. Yeah, remember to use your, remove your USB stick after installation? Unbelievable. Oh, hang on. We've got this ACPI error again. Aborting method due to previous error. Wow. When DHCP6? Nope. Nope. It's just the same error message over and over again. It's not going to boot. <sighs> Unbelievable. Um, um, giving up for now. Catch you next time.